So how can I make a website like this responsive, right? Where I have two columns in some areas where things just get too squished at smaller sizes when we, we get this down or if I open this on my phone, it, everything gets way too narrow. And it's fairly easy to do. I'm gonna go find this area where I have my two columns being created right there, two column layout. And so, yeah, what we're gonna do here is come in with a media query. And media queries look different from anything else that you've probably done in CSS so far because it's called an at rule. So you do an at symbol and then you write the word media. Then it's open and close parentheses. Then it's an open and close curly braces. And then you put on the styles you want to go inside of here. Inside of here, we can actually search for a lot of different things. This is called like the media features or what we include in here. In this case, I'm only worried about layouts. So I'm gonna say width is greater than, and let's just come in with a number of say 600 pixels. And we'll talk more about choosing this number in a little bit, but I'm gonna say when my viewport size, when the width of that is larger than 600 pixels, I wanna change things. So if I have a two column layout like I have right here, what I actually wanna do is I want this layout to be one column. So I'm gonna say it's one column now because I'm gonna take away those the layout that I had created. Everything is stacking. But when I get to this, I want it to go up to two columns. So if I have a media rule written like this, I would come in here and put my selector to column layout and then put in that grid template columns that I had here. So my grid, so my two column layout gets display grid, gap, and then I have my layout only getting added when we get to the larger screen size. So I have my two column layout, but if I get below a certain size, they will stack one on top of each other instead. And then when we get to that larger size, we pass 600 pixels in width, then they go into this two column layout, which looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, one way you can simplify things with uh, CSS now is you can actually include your media query inside the original selector, and then you don't have to repeat it. And I actually prefer doing things this way and I think it makes it a little bit easier and more organized in doing that, uh, just so you don't have everything split apart as much. So to do that, I'm gonna remove this and remove this. But I'm gonna take this media rule, I'm gonna put it inside of that selector for my two column layout. You can see the, high, the, the syntax highlighting here has actually changed a little bit in VS Code because it's not as comfortable. Uh, nest, this is part of the nesting specification I wouldn't get too far into it if you're a beginner in CSS. You have to be a little bit careful and it can be a bit of a complicated uh, topic, but I, I really like nesting. I think it's improved how we can write CSS. And this is one of my best, the best use cases for it in my opinion. So we have my two column layout, put the default styles I want. And then when we get to a larger size than 600 pixels, I add in the, the differences I wanna make. And I'm doing it for a column, I could be changing background colors, I could be changing font sizes, I could be doing anything I want. But in this case, I'm just going from a stacked one column layout right here to then going to my two column layout over here. And because I reuse that same class on other pages, here I have that two column layout as well. When I get to the smaller size, it stacks. And when I get over to here, it's getting bigger that way. And to highlight how this could also be useful is you might've noticed that the smaller sizes, I'm actually getting some horizontal scrolling. The reason for that is I have a really big font size on the text here at the top of my page. So what I could do here is where I have that really big font size that is set over here on my H1 where I have a font size of 7.5 rem, which is a really big font size. If up until now you've only been setting font sizes in pixels, please don't do that. Use rem instead. <laughs> and we're gonna come here and we're gonna say at media. And we're gonna say the same thing. Width is greater than 600 pixels. And I tend to try and keep the same numbers in different areas that I'm using because then all my layouts are adjusting at the same time. And it makes it a lot easier for me to be able to like look through my site and find where different things might be going wrong. Because if you put different, like this was happening at 650 and another thing's happening at 725 and something else is happening at a different value, you're having to check every possible iteration instead of just being, okay, it's working here, it's working here. You get a, a general idea of any problems that might be coming up and it's a lot easier to handle. But again, we'll talk more about picking that number in a second. But what I'm gonna say is my font size will be 7.5 and maybe here it's gonna be a 4.5. So if I refresh that at the large sizes, we have the nice big font, but when I get to the smaller size, oh, and see, you can actually see it's causing a problem before that because this is really big and a big word, but then we get smaller and then it gets to that smaller font size right here that I think actually works better. 
But that raises an important thing. Oh, that's actually one of those problems I was looking for where here my text is still too big. So maybe that just means that the 600 should be adapted. Because even here, my two columns, this is kind of narrow for two columns as well. Things are getting a little bit too squished. And this is sort of how I pick my breakpoints. It's a little bit of feel, a little bit of vibes, uh, and I just you know find something that I think works. And so I'm gonna try 720 instead. And in general, 600 is very small. Um, so the seven to 850 range is often where I end up having a breakpoint uh, as my smallest one. So now if I do that, let's refresh and let's just see where that's kicking in. I think it's maybe still a bit too small, but I've, I've solved that problem where my font size at the top is shrinking before I'm running into any overflow issues. So I could definitely leave this like that, but I might go through and see, do I want that a little bit bigger or not? You know what? I'm okay with that, but um, it probably could be adapted a little bit, but that's looking pretty good. Uh, if I can go back to my homepage, I can take a look here. Everything's looking all right. We can shrink this down and then, yeah, I'm not getting any overflow. My font size is changing and everything else looks like it's working pretty good. So really, really quick introduction to media queries, adapting layouts, font sizes, your layouts, anything else you can include in a media query. And this is called a mobile first approach where we're going with the basic styling here. So I just have a grid, a gap to create a basic layout and then I'm adding complexity as we get to a larger screen size uh, with the width greater than. You might also, just so you know, if you come across other tutorials or videos, you might come across things where it's media and it'd be um, min width 720 pixels. This was the original syntax for media queries, whereas this is our range syntax. The range syntax is newer and because it's newer, most people don't use it <laughs> just because a lot of us were trained on using the older syntax, but this and this would be equivalent. I always found this one awkward because a min width is for a minimum size of, so it'd be 720 pixels and bigger. But when you see the word min, you think small, <laughs> whereas here you're going a width greater than 720. It's much easier to read. So I much prefer the new range syntax and it's what I use all the time now. So I'm gonna stick with that. 